note to self, uh, if you don't drink water before you have to preach. <laughs> Amen. 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 Mark chapter 4. When you have it, please say amen. amen. And it starts off as, And he began again to teach by the seaside, and there was gathered unto him a great multitude, so that he entered into a ship and sat in the sea. And the whole multitude was by the land, by the sea, on the land. And he, he taught them many things by parables and said unto them in his do, do, uh, doctrine, Hearken, behold, there went out a sower to sow. And it came to pass, some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it. And some fell on stony ground where it had not much earth, and immediately it sprang up, because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. And some fell among the thorns. The thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no fruit. And others fell on good ground and did yield fruit, that sprang up and increased and brought forth 30 and some 60 and some 100. And he said unto them, he that has ears to hear, let him hear. And when he was alone, they were about him with the 12 and asked of him the parable. And he said unto them, Unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but unto them that are without, all these things are done in parables, that seeing they may see and not perceive, and hearing they may hear and not understand, lest at any time they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven them. And he said unto them, Know you not this parable? And how then will you know all parables? The sower soweth the word, and these are they by the wayside, where the word is sown. But when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. And these are they likewise, which are sown by stony ground, who when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness and have no root in themselves and so endure but for a time. Afterward, when affliction or persecution ariseth, for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word, and the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things, entereth in, chokes the word, and it becometh unfruitful. And these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word, and receive it, and bring forth fruit, some thirty, some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some a hundred. Thank you, Heavenly Father, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart are acceptable in your sight, Father. Just thank you for using me to preach your word today. Thank you for the great privilege it is, Father. Just thank you for all things in the name of your wonderful Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Day 44. I feel so uh, grown today. I got on the big boy mic. I can walk around. I thank Brother Donald, but I'm going to stay right here for a minute. Uh, if I feel like I need to move, because y'all can't hit a, it's not as hard to hit a moving target. 
That's what my principal tells me. But um, Brother Chucky asked me yesterday if I was ready, because he knew I had to preach today. And he said, do you have your three points? And I thought about it. And I'm going to do something a little bit different. How I was taught with a teaching ministry, you tell the congregation what you're going to teach them. You teach them, and then you tell them what you taught them. So today, we're going to hear about and learn about, hopefully, the sower, some seed, about a parable, and about the ground. That's what God asked me to speak about today and preach about. Um, like my mentor, Pastor Watts, I guess I'm an expository preacher. I haven't figured that out. I know I have a teaching ministry, so that would be before the preaching. But anyway, we're going to go through the Bible line by line. It's 20 verses. But a little bit about a parable. A parable is a, a earthly story with a heavenly meaning, is what I was taught. There are 39 parables, if you take all the parables that are in the books of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, 39. There's no parables in the book of John. So we're going to go through this. And he, that's Jesus Christ, again began to teach by the seaside. And there was gathered unto him a great multitude. So not just a multitude, ladies and gentlemen, but a great multitude. I'm an English teacher, so those adjectives are important. A great multitude, the word says. So not just a little bit of people. So with this great multitude, Jesus, he went into a ship, and he taught them. Now, you can blame that I'm doing this teaching on Elder Tom Tolliver, because he said this was one of the best teachings that he had heard, but we were at the prison where we had a captive audience. And I don't know if he was sleeping or not. So he might have dreamed about this sermon, about some other sermon. But we had a captive audience at the prison. So please, brothers and sisters, if you think I'm a little bit long, please don't bring out your car keys. Because you all are not a captive audience. Amen? Um, so Jesus had this multitude, and it was a great multitude. And he taught. And it says, the word says, he taught them many things by parable and said unto him his doctrine. So a parable. Why did he choose parables? We know that they're from the Greek word paraboling. It means an application. It means a coming alongside. Um, a throwing, and bola is a throwing and a comparison. So he's throwing something at them. He's throwing the word at them. Um, the origins, like I said, is Greek. It was first used in the 1570s in the New Latin. And it means, like I said, an application. Para, that prefix, para, means alongside, of, by, beside, beyond, or by. And the root word, boli, means the throwing. So something is thrown alongside. Other people have said, other ministers that I study, an earthly story with a heavenly truth. So it's some truth in this. It's God's word. It has to be some truth. 
And then in verse 3, he says, hearken and behold. That's very important. Hearken and behold. Hearken means listen up. I'm going to tell you something. And then behold is like to observe, to see, to pay attention. So Jesus Christ is telling them, listen up and pay attention to what I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you something important. Listen up and pay attention to what I'm going to tell you. And that's coming from Jesus Christ. So he used those two words to write alongside each other, one after the other. Hearken and behold. There went out a sower to sow. And that's all he said about the sower. He didn't give a name. It's just a sower. And then he went right into, and it came to pass, as he sowed, some fell by the wayside. So immediately, if we listen to that, if we're really reading that, he didn't elaborate on the sower at all. It's just a sower. It's not Pastor Watts the sower. It's not T.D. Jakes the sower. It's not Pastor Joel Osteen the sower. It's just a sower. So it's just a believing sower. Believing that when he sows something, something is going to grow. So I got a hint for you. It's a foreshadowing. Any of us can be sowers. And we're supposed to be sowers. That's just a little extra. <laughs> Amen? Some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. And some fell by stony ground where it had much, not much earth, and immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of earth. And when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. So Jesus Christ immediately starts talking about the ground. He skips the sower, it can be any sower, and he just starts talking about the ground, the earth, where the seed is going to fall. So if I title this, it's Are You Sowing Seed? Are you sowing seed? I wanted to say we, and I fought God on this a little bit, um, and he said, no, you say what I want you to say. You say you, because in your capacity today, you're preaching my word, so you say you. That's what I want you to say. So I have a little bit of a hard time to it, but I am listening to myself. Um, so he immediately starts talking about the earth. And some fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no fruit. And some fell on good ground, and it yielded fruit and sprang up and increased and brought forth 30, some 60, and some 100. And then he said something really that caught, it caught my attention. I can imagine it might have caught their attention. He that has ears to hear, let him hear. And then he sent them away. So can you imagine the people, I got ears, I heard him. Somebody probably said, what does he mean? What's he, what's he talking about? Um, if I got ears to hear, can I hear? I heard what you said. I heard what you said, Jesus. Um, and then some people might have been like, wow. But he sent them away. He just said, our family has a saying, go on and get. He taught him that. He said, if you have ears to hear, let you hear. And then he said, go on and get. He sent them away. And verse 10, and when he was alone, they that were about with him, about him, with the 12, asked of him the parable. So, 
they that were about him. That caught my attention, too. Um, back in the day, I have had some females ask me, just what are you about? You know, what are you about? You know, you know, you know, you ladies know when a gentleman comes around you, it's like, oh, oh, well, what's he about? Um, and what are you about? I've had people tell me, ask me that. Just what are you about? It says in the word, these people were about Jesus. They were about Jesus Christ. So meaning they were close to him. They were with the 12. And they were about Jesus. And they asked. They had ears and they heard what he said. But he didn't dismiss them. And they went to him and asked him, what's going on with this parable? What in the world is happening with this parable? And he said, unto you it's given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but unto them these things are done in parables, that seeing they may see and not perceive, and hearing they may hear and not understand, least at any time they should be converted and their sins should not be forgiven them. That's serious. That's deep. He talked to them in parables so It was people among them that he sent away that he didn't want them to know the secrets because he only talked to the people that were about him. And he, the reason that he gives is so they would hear and not understand. They would see and not perceive. And the more serious part on it that at any time they should hear, be converted, and their sins be forgiven them. So if you look into that real deep, these were people that their sins weren't going to be forgiven them. That's what the word says. I'm not making it up. That's pretty serious. Um, so the secrets, the secrets, I wrote down um, for some of y'all uh, Greek people, um, it's like a fraternity or a sorority where y'all know the secrets that we don't. Y'all know the secrets that we don't. But thank God that Jesus Christ did tell me some secrets. I don't know the secrets that y'all know. Maybe I will, maybe I won't, just in case I pledge grad line or something like that. But that's another, that's another sermon in another day. Um, but Jesus Christ has made it available for me to be, and you, to be about him and know some of the secrets that he's passing out. Thank God. He's passing them out right now. Glory to God. Amen? Amen. So, in verse 15 and 13, he says unto them, Know ye not this parable? And how then, how then will you know all parables? Because from this point on, he's gone and he's been teaching the people in parables. And he's going to keep on teaching them in parables. So he's like, if you don't know this one, how are you going to know the others? You know, but they were good students. They were asking. And he said, the sower, in verse 14, soweth the word. So that's somebody sowing the word, somebody speaking the word. And these are they by the wayside. Where the word is sown, but when they have heard, Satan cometh. Who cometh? Satan cometh. Immediately, there's another, um, well, that's an adverb. 
is telling how he comes. He's not coming like, oh, I'm going to come and I'm going to get that word. He's immediately jumping on that word when they heard it, when it's spoken, when it's preached. And take us away the word that was sown in their hearts. So the word gets sown in our hearts. That's the field. And these are they likewise which are stone, sown on stony ground. When they have heard the word immediately, there's that word immediately again, immediately receive it with gladness. They're happy about it. They're glad about it. It's an emotional reaction about it. And have no root in themselves. And so, verse 17, so endure but for a time. Afterward, when affliction or persecution arises, for the word's sake, immediately again, they are offended. So things happen. Things happen to those people. The first people by the wayside, they heard it, and immediately the devil, the word says the devil, just snatches it away. They don't even get a chance. It don't even, it may hit their heart and bounce right off. And immediately the devil comes and takes it. The other people, they hear it immediately with gladness and then immediately persecution comes and they're offended. It says persecution and affliction. So those are things that's going to come. We're all living life right now. Those are things that's going to come. That's what the word says. I'm not making this up. So why get offended? Because then you'll be like them, the stony ground people. And the thorns, in verse 18, and these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word, and then the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things entereth in, chokes the word and it becomes unfruitful. Wow. The deceitfulness of riches, the lust of things, other things, the cares of this world. He gives three. The cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things. Other things besides the word. Wow. I know I, when I get to it, I've been there on all four of them, but definitely the thorns. It's a lot of thorns in New York. It's a lot of thorns in the Bronx. It's a lot of thorns in Charleston, West Virginia. But anyway, the thorns, the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches. I was a banker. Sister Regina was a banker. Sister Moner is a banker right now. Um, I think we know about those riches. And we've been around those people that just crave after those riches. And I was one of them. Uh, Brother Larry is a banker. And then in verse 20, and these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word and receive it and bring forth fruit, some 30, some 60, and some 100. Okay, so, and I want to say class so bad, but church, um, if you pay attention, we learned about three different kinds of soil, three different kinds of bad soil, and three different kinds of good soil. What happens in the three different kinds of bad soil and what happens in the three different kinds of good soil? Um, yeah, I'm not gonna keep y'all to five o'clock like Pastor Watts says, but anyway, <laughs> it's four things that can happen when we speak the word, four things. It's going to hit somebody's heart, first of all. 
they're either going to be wayside, stony, thorny, or good. So if we know, and that's one of the secrets, I used to get so discouraged when I was witnessing to somebody. Because I thought my witnessing was going to be so good that I was going to unfold the word to them so well that they immediately were going to say, what must I do to get saved? And that doesn't happen. That's not reality. So I got discouraged. I got depressed about it. But the word says that that's what happens. And it probably happened, not probably, it most likely did happen to Jesus Christ because he sent some people away that they never were going to believe. That's awesome. He sent some people away that never were going to believe, and he perceived that. I haven't gotten to that point. Um, but I know in my heart, I have been all four. I remember somebody witnessing to me, and I just, they gave me a track. You all know what a track is, right? They gave me a track on the Staten Island Ferry. And I had the nerve to just ball it up and throw it down on them. So right to their face, they gave me the track, and I looked at them, and I just balled up the track and threw it down. So I know I was a wayside person at that time. Um, I went to a Pentecostal church one time. I was all worked up with emotions. I immediately wanted to get saved, got saved. A young lady in the church kind of rejected me. I didn't hang around in that church for but a, a second. So stony, no, no root. I just grew up fast, started speaking the word, wanted to go to church with her every day, stony ground wasn't about anything. Uh, the thorns, oh my goodness. The deceitfulness of riches, the cares of this world kind of choked me. Um, the lust of other things. Wow, just those words, they're so powerful. I can think about those times right before I came down here. One of the reasons that I came down here because a, a ministry, a church ministry, said you need to get out of New York. You need to get out of there, son, because nothing good is going to come for you if you stay here. You can come back and visit after a time, but you don't need to stay here. And that's when they sent me down here. But, um, the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things. I don't think I have to say much more about that to y'all, because everybody, most of the people in here are grown, but I know even some of the students know about some of those things. They're powerful things, and they can get us if we're not rooted and grounded in the word. So when we're witnessing, like I said, we're going to expect, we should expect these things to happen. It's like something like this is going to happen. But we can be about Jesus Christ. So this passage of scripture, it should be encouraging to us. We found out about a little bit about the sower, a little bit about parables, a little bit about the seed, the seed is the word, and a little bit about the ground, those four types of ground. And it is three types of bad ground and three types of good ground. That's what we found out a little bit. We found out that we can be about Jesus Christ. And that's a blessing. And that he's going to tell us some secrets. We 
found out about that. And that's a blessing. So we should be encouraged. There's going to be those four types of people. It's going to be those four types of reactions. So don't be discouraged, saints. Don't be downtrodden. Don't be depressed when you witness. Just keep on speaking the word. Speak the word like you're supposed to do. We're supposed to speak the word. I don't know if y'all knew that. We're supposed to speak the word. And don't and if you don't get the reaction that you thought you were going to get, it's God that gives the increase. Do y'all know that? It's God that gives the increase. Just keep sowing. Just keep sowing that word, saints. Just keep speaking. Just keep speaking that word, saints. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, just thank you for this opportunity.